rides here before heading outbound towards Hampton Roads Harbor and the Naval Station Norfolk. During the cruise today, I'll refer to both the port and starboard side of the boat. An easy way to remember between the two, there are four letters in the word left. Four letters in the word port, and port is the left side. To our port side is Town Point Park, home to quite a few festivals held in the downtown area during the spring, summer, and fall. Beyond the park, the curved gray building we're passing is the World Trade Center here in town. Many of the offices inside the building are occupied by businesses which deal with the trade that comes in and out of the Port of Virginia. Black and white vessel parked here at Town Point Park is the Freedom Elite, available for private charter and operated by City Cruises. You'll see a larger black and white vessel coming into view next on our port side. That is the Spirit of Mount Vernon. She'll be offering lunch and dinner cruises here in the harbor sometime this morning. Two-story building with a large gray roof and the word of Waterside on the roof is Waterside District. Waterside District features bars, restaurants, and entertainment venues. Out in front of the Waterside District building is the Waterside Municipal Marina. This marina is a popular stopping point for vessels visiting the downtown Norfolk area. Docked on the outside wall of the marina, the green and white sailing vessel that you see there is the American Rover. American Rover, a three-masted topsail scooter which offers sailing excursions out into Hampton Roads Harbor on a daily basis. Docked at the marina, you'll see a blue and white paddle wheel vessel that is the Elizabeth River Ferry. Ferries offer passenger service between Norfolk and Portsmouth every half an hour and a ride across the river aboard the ferry costs just two dollars. Tall Brown building on the Norfolk skyline to our port side is Dominion Tower standing at 27 stories. It is one of the tallest buildings in southeastern Virginia and it is the tallest building here on the inner harbor. The bridge to our port side is the Berkeley Bascule Bridge, a draw bridge which spans the eastern branch of the Elizabeth River. Located down the eastern branch are several private shipyards as well as Norfolk's Harbor Park. Harbor Park, home to the Norfolk Tides Baseball Club, the AAA farm team of the Baltimore Orioles. several shipyards will be passing during the cruise now in view to our port side. The yard with the American flag flying out in front is the General Dynamics Corporation shipyard working on a couple of naval vessels currently. Ship number 21 is the USS New York. New York is a San Antonio class amphibious assault ship known as a landing platform dock or LPD for short. That ship is 688 feet in length, 108 feet wide. She'll carry a crew of 400 and transport 800 Marines. That vessel will carry six helicopters as well as landing craft and hovercraft used to transport Marines and equipment from ship to shore during an amphibious assault. That ship is named for New York City, named in honor of the victims who lost their lives there on September 11th. There's about eight tons of steel in the bow section of that ship, taken from the remnants of the World Trade Center. LHD number 7 is the USS Iwo Jima. She is a WASP class amphibious assault ship and is a landing helicopter dock or LHD for short. That vessel, 844 feet in length, 140 feet wide at the flight deck. She'll carry a crew of 1,292 and she can transport more than 1,800 Marines. That vessel will carry 40 helicopters, both attack and transport helicopters. She's also equipped with a variety of landing craft and hovercraft on board. She also carries Marines Harrier jump jet and Osprey aircraft as well. And that ship is currently high and dry out of the water, located within the floating dry dock Speedy. You'll see the black and gray walls of the floating dry dock on either side of the ship. 
The way the floating dry dock works, the walls and bottom of the dry dock are hollow and can be flooded with water, which will cause the dry dock to sink down into the river. When the dry dock is submerged, the ship is then carefully maneuvered over top of it, and when the vessel is in the right position over top the submerged dry dock, the walls and bottom of the dry dock are then pumped free of water, lifting the ship out of the water so that bottom side repair can be performed. Tied up alongside the floating dry dock, you'll see a boxy gray and white barge. That is a barracks barge. Barracks barges are used in temporary floating housing and office space for ships undergoing repair work. In shore to our port side is the old Virginia shipyard, home to a couple of tugboat companies. Black, white, and blue tugs that you see inshore there belong to the Vulcan Materials Company. Vulcan tugs are primarily used to move sand and gravel barges around the harbor. Sand and gravel carried in those barges used primarily for making concrete. Red and black tugs that you see inshore belong to the McAllister Towing Company. McAllister tugs are primarily used to assist in docking and undocking very large commercial ships calling here at the port of Virginia. is another ship repair facility. This is BAE Systems. They repair both commercial and military vessels. The large boxy white and green structure that you see there is the floating dry dock Titan, one of the world's largest floating dry docks, more than 880 feet in length, with a lifting capacity of well over 60,000 tons. In a body of water in view to our port side next will be the southern branch of the Elizabeth River. Southern Branch, home to several shipyards, as well as quite a lot of import and export facilities, which are part of the Port of Virginia. Southern Branch is also the entrance to the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway. The Inner Harbor marks mile zero of the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway. It is a system of rivers, lakes, bays, sounds, and canals, all interconnected together and stretching from here all the way to Miami, Florida, which is nearly 1,100 miles to our south. Vessels of less than 65 feet in height and 8 feet in draft can travel in the intercoastal all the way to Miami without having to enter the Atlantic Ocean. And taking a look down the southern branch about a half mile from our position on the right bank of the river, you'll see a large green crane on shore. Adjacent to that crane, three-story brick buildings. Those brick buildings mark the beginning of the Norfolk Naval Shipyard. The Norfolk Naval Shipyard is the nation's oldest shipyard. Open back in the mid-1700s. The yard was originally known as the Gosport Yard, first operated by a British company. The yard's been operated by the British, the United States, the Confederate States of America, and now the United States Navy operates that facility. They no longer build ships here, only ship repair is done at the yard nowadays. The yard is quite historic, not only the first shipyard in the nation, it was also a dish shipyard that the Confederate States of America outfitted the ship Merrimack into the ironclad vessel CSS Virginia. It was also at this shipyard that the Navy's first cruiser and first aircraft carrier were constructed. And the large green crane down the way there is the hammerhead crane used to install gun turrets onto the decks of battleships that were built here between the First and the Second World Wars. And the Norfolk Naval Shipyard is located within the city limits of Portsmouth, Virginia nowadays. When the name of the yard was changed from the Gosport Yard to the Norfolk Naval Shipyard, that property was then located in Norfolk County. As we make our turn, coming into view to our port side is the waterfront of Portsmouth, Virginia. You'll see the American flag flying over top of Portsmouth's High Street Landing to our port side. High Street Landing. One of the stops here in Portsmouth for the Elizabeth River Ferries. Ferries offering passenger service between the two cities. High Street Landing is situated at the base of High Street, which is the primary street of a very nice section of Portsmouth known as Old Town. Within Old Town Portsmouth are shops, restaurants, museums, and old homes and churches. Many of the homes and churches within Old Town were built during the 17 and 1800s. You'll see a red and white vessel with the word Portsmouth painted along the side out to our port side. That is the light ship Portsmouth. Light ships like this one were used in the past to mark entrances to harbors and channels as well as warn mariners of dangerous shoals and other hazards. All the light ships have been removed from service. Most of them cut up for scrap metal. Portsmouth now serves as a light ship museum. 
The tall, tall tan building you'll see to our port side is the Harbor Tower Apartments. Harbor Tower standing at 24 stories. It is the second tallest building on the Inner Harbor. And you may want to keep that building in mind once we reach the naval base because the height of that building is approximately the same height as a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier. That is from the very bottom of the ship's keel to the top of the ship's superstructure. Once again, the building standing at 24 stories. You'll see some construction going on to our port side, renovation project of the Portsmouth Seawall. And coming into view next on our port side is the Tidewater Yacht Marina. Tidewater Yacht, a full service marina offering slips, fuel, and repair service. It's also a seafood restaurant called Fish and Slips, located in the middle of the marina. Navy's Regional Medical Center of Portsmouth, Virginia, formerly known as the Portsmouth Naval Hospital. Looking through the trees, you'll see a white building with a green dome roof. That is the original can never close its doors or refuse to care for any patient, and that is significant seeing that the hospital changed hands several times during the Civil War. Also, since 1832, the hospital's been added to a few times. You'll see some of the new phases of the hospital out to our port side. Tall brick building opened in 1960. Brick buildings with the green roofs have been in operation since the early 2000s. And all the phases of that facility together make this the world's largest military medical installation. The original portion of the hospital is still in use. No longer used for any type of medical procedures, but it is used as office space. The original operating room for the hospital, located just beneath that green dome. The very top of the dome itself is glass, which allows sunlight into the operating room, so surgery could be performed. Downtown Norfolk Waterfront. On the point of Town Point Park, the brick structure that you see with a single flagpole is Norfolk's Armed Forces Memorial. Scattered around that memorial are bronze letters written by soldiers who lost their lives fighting in every war that the United States has been involved in, from the Revolution to the Persian Gulf War of 1991. Beyond Town Point is Nauticus. Visitor Center featuring many interactive exhibits on different facets of maritime life, both military and commercial. On the second floor of the building, the Hampton Roads Naval Museum, which is open free to the public and built from Nauticus International Pier, is the Half Moon Celebration Center and Cruise Ship Terminal. Cruise ships can pull into the pier here to load and unload passengers, primarily for cruises to the Caribbean. And you'll see the Norwegian Joy here at Nauticus today, which is making a stopover. She's not picking up or dropping off any passengers. She left New York City last night. She'll depart here around 5.30 and head for the Bahamas. Norwegian Joy, one of the larger cruise ships we get here at Norfolk. That vessel just over 1,100 feet in length. Battleships, which is docked here in Nauticus. Can't see the Wisconsin at the moment. She'll be coming into view as we make our way around the cruise ship. Battleship Wisconsin is the last and largest of the four Iowa-class battleships built during World War II. Battleship Wisconsin was built between 1943 and 1944 at the Philadelphia Navy Shipyard. She was commissioned on the 16th of April, 1944, and served her first service fighting the Japanese in the Pacific. Battleship Wisconsin is a very large ship, 888 feet in length, 109 feet wide, and she weighs in at more than 60,000 tons when fully loaded. Primary weapons aboard USS Wisconsin are nine 16-inch guns the ship carries. There are three guns per turret, two turrets forward of the ship's superstructure, and one turret aft. Each of the 16-inch guns can fire a 2,700-pound projectile at a distance of more than 20 nautical miles with pinpoint accuracy. 16-inch guns are the largest ballistic guns ever deployed aboard a U.S. ship. 
and they are the most any vessel. Battleship also carries 12 smaller guns, which are 5-inch, 38 caliber guns, two per mount, three mounts on either side of the ship. And during the Second World War, the battleship also carried well over 100 anti-aircraft guns as well. The battleship not only served the U.S. during World War II, but also the Korean War and Operation Desert Storm. Throughout the long career of the ship, the Wisconsin was equipped with newer, more advanced weaponry, including four phalanx close-in weapon systems, harpoon anti-ship missiles, and Tomahawk cruise missiles as well. The battleship is now permanently moored here at Nauticus. She is open to visitors as part of the admission to the Nauticus Center. City of Norfolk will be on our starboard side and Portsmouth to our port side. On our starboard side currently, you'll see a complex of white buildings with blue trim and the letters NOAA on the side of the building. That is the Atlantic Command Center of NOAA. NOAA stands for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. NOAA is responsible for producing navigation charts. They also monitor the nation's fisheries and serve as the National Weather Service. You'll see a small bridge ensure to our starboard side. That is the Brambleton Avenue Bridge. It spans Smith Creek. Ensure the bridge, a very nice section of Norfolk, known as Ghent. Ghent is home to one of the nation's finest collections of Victorian homes, many of which were built around the turn of the 19th century by sea captains who chose Norfolk as a place. Great building on the starboard side. Near condominiums, Ridley. Creek ahead of us is a small ship operated by General Dynamics. You'll see three gray vessels docked there currently. These ships are the Cape Race and Cape Rod. They are stored here on a permanent basis. These ships are used to transport military vehicles and equipment during a time of war or national emergency. These vessels are known as RORO ships. RORO standing for Roll On, Roll Off. There are large ramps on the stern of each of these ships which can be folded down to a pier, allowing vehicles and equipment to be quickly and easily rolled on and off. These ships can be loaded and ready for sea in less than 10 days if necessary. The Norfolk skyline to our starboard side is the Harbor's Edge Retirement Condominiums. And a white building with the American flag out in front of it to our starboard side is called the Waterfield Building. Waterfield Building originally built as a solar powered building during the 1970s energy crisis. This building is the district headquarters of the Army Corps of Engineers. The Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for maintaining the waterways here in the harbor. They monitor the depths of the channels, arrange for the dredging of channels here, and remove any debris which may become a navigational hazard. Over to our starboard side, you'll see a couple of cannons out in front of a white wall and some white buildings beyond the wall. That is Fort Norfolk. Fort Norfolk built here shortly after the Revolutionary War by orders of General George Washington. During the Revolution, before Fort Norfolk was built, British ships were able to sail into the inner harbor, bombard Norfolk, nearly destroying it altogether. To keep that from happening again, Fort Norfolk was placed here as a strategic defense point for the city, and after the fort was constructed, it was actually never used in combat. That is because no invading force ever made it this far up the Elizabeth River after the Revolution, so Fort Norfolk never saw any action. The fort is now operated by the Norfolk Historical Society, and it is open to visitors on certain weekends. Other side, that is the former location of J.H. Miles Clam Packing Company. J.H. Miles operated on this point of land for more than 115 years before they moved their operations up to New Jersey about eight years ago. In its heyday, that facility would package more than four tons of clam meat on a daily basis. Most of that was sent to the Campbell Soup Company. Coming into view off in the distance to our starboard side, you'll see a couple of brick buildings with large brown doors. Those are the ventilation houses for the portion of the Norfolk Midtown with tunnels. Tunnels pass underneath the river here and about 45 feet of water. Coming back up on the ports of the side to our left, where you'll see a couple of other brick buildings inshore there. Also on our port side is Portsmouth Marine Terminal, that is PMT for short. PMT is the oldest 
container terminal here in the port. It is no longer used by container ships. That is because ships nowadays calling here in the port are too large to call at BMT. The large black and white ship that you see there currently is a military repositioning ship. You'll see another of those vessels shortly. I'll tell you more about them in just a few minutes. Looking to our starboard side, the next pier that will pass is Marine Hydraulics International Shipyard, known as MHI for short, working on four naval vessels currently. On the south side of the pier inshore is ship number 51, which is the USS Oak Hill, a Whidbey Island class amphibious assault ship. Number 107, the USS Truxton, across the pier from her. Number 72, the USS Mahan. Both of these ships are Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyers. And the fourth ship under repair here at MHI is inshore on the north side of the pier. That is the USS San Antonio, the first of the San Antonio class of assault ships. We'll see more of all of these classes of warship out of Naval Station in Norfolk and go into further details about them. The next couple of piers that will pass are cargo terminals. General cargo refers to any type of cargo which is not stored in ship and container boxes. Warehouses on the piers here are used to house coffee beans, cocoa beans, plywood, chemicals, and a few other products. Some items of export leaving these piers in recent years include very large electric generators, as well as railroad cars and a few locomotives being shipped to places like China, India, and Brazil. to our port side, you'll see the western branch of the Elizabeth River spanned in the distance by the West Norfolk Bridge. Out in the middle of the harbor to our port side is a group of piers, pilings, and small white buildings. That is the United States Navy's magnetic silencing facility. The Navy uses that facility to demagnetize the hulls of their warships. That process is done by bringing a ship in between these piers to space magnetically north and south. Once the ship is docked, the entire vessel is then wrapped in electric cable, one cable every three to five feet or so. When the entire ship is wrapped in cable, alternating current is then sent through the cable until the ship has no more magnetic signature. The process of demagnetizing a ship is done after a ship has been newly constructed or gone through a major overhaul, and it's done for a couple of important reasons. First of all, it will reduce the ship's vulnerability to detonating magnetic mines, will also reduce any interference with sensitive equipment aboard a vessel, such as the compass and weapons guidance system. Black Hall two-masted sailing vessel, which is the schooner Virginia. Virginia operates out of Nauticus. She is a sail training vessel and ambassador ship for the state. On our port side, you'll see a facility with quite a few white storage tanks. That is the United States Navy's Craney Island Fuel Depot. Craney Island is where the Navy stores most of its petroleum products for ships and aircraft of the Atlantic Fleet. Most of the fuel is stored there, brought by way of a very long pipeline, which originates just outside of Houston, Texas. The Navy oilers pull into the piers here to load up with all types of fuels, which are then used to refuel ships out at sea. You'll see a Navy oiler dock the Craney Island Fuel Pier this morning. That is a Henry J. Kaiser class fleet oiler, 667 feet in length, 97 feet wide, and she'll transport 7.5 million gallons of fuels used to refuel ships out at sea.
you'll see Virginia International Gateway, known as VIG for short. VIG is the newest container terminal here in the Port of Virginia, opening back in 2007. Cranes that operate at VIG are Suez class cranes. They have the largest class of container crane in the world. These cranes are capable of handling the world's largest ships. The largest ships in the world nowadays are container ships of more than 1,300 feet in length with the ability to transport well over 20,000 containers at once. Keep in mind the containers carried aboard these ships are the same boxes that you'll see towed by tractor trailers along the nation's highways. This is the ship in the middle, which is the CMA CGM La Perouse. That vessel just over 1,200 feet in length. And just next door to VIG, off in the distance to our port side, you'll see the Portsmouth Coast Guard Station, part of the 5th District of the U.S. Coast Guard, Hampton Roads, Virginia Group. Coast Guard base here in Portsmouth, home to several 270-foot medium endurance Coast Guard cutters, as well as harbor patrol vessels. The responsibilities of the Coast Guard here in the harbor include the maintenance of all the channel markers, search and rescue operations, and law enforcement. Years as we make our way past Lammers Point, coal has been exported from this point of land since the 1840s. This terminal is now owned and operated by the Norfolk Southern Railway Corporation, and it is one of the world's fastest and most efficient coal loading facilities. Coal exported from here, brought by rail car from more than 130 mines in West Virginia, Tennessee, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, and western sections of Virginia. Coal is loaded aboard the large ships which call here using the 17-story tall gantry cranes you'll see on pier number 6. The two black cranes roll up and down the pier on tracks, loading the separate compartments of ships without having to move, to move those ships themselves. You'll see one ship working at Lambert Point today. The ships that call here range from 700 to over 1,000 feet in length, and often they carry 120,000 tons of coal or so. Put that amount of coal in perspective, 120,000 tons of coal is about 20,000 tons more than an aircraft carrier weighs. A bunch of the coal exported from here is taken to the Far East where it's used to make steel, some of it taken to Europe where it's used for producing electricity. As we pass by Lambert Point, we are entering Hampton Roads Harbor. Hampton Roads, one of the world's finest natural harbors, over 12 miles long and 4 miles wide. Harbor made up of the Elizabeth River, the Lafayette River, the Manzibin River, the James River, and the Chesapeake Bay. Hampton Roads, also a very historic waterway, it's here in 1607, with Captain Christopher Newport and the Jamestown settlers first sailed on their way to setting up the Jamestown colony. It was also here in 1862. With the famous battle of the Civil War ironclad ships, Monitor Merrimack occurred. It was also here in Hampton Roads where naval aviation began. That happened back in 1911 when a stunt pilot named Eugene Ely flew a biplane off the deck of a Navy ship for the first time. That is the Craney Island dump site. Craney Island is not a garbage dump. It is where all the dredge material, which is brought up from the bottoms of Hampton Roads Harbor's channels, is deposited. We are constantly dredging the channels here at Hampton Roads in order to maintain depths deep enough and wide enough for ocean-going ship traffic, which calls here. Channels here in Hampton Roads are the deepest channels of any port along the U.S. East Coast with water depths of at least 55 feet from Lammers Point out to sea. Out 
to our starboard side, you'll see the mouth of the Lafayette River in view. The Lafayette spans in the distance by the Hampton Boulevard Bridge. Lafayette River used to be known as Tanner's Creek and during the colonial era. Tanner's Creek was a popular hideout for pirates that operated in these waters, one of those pirates being Blackbeard. You'll see Tanner's Point out to our starboard side. Tanner's Point, home to Norfolk International Terminal, known as NIT for short. NIT is the largest cargo handling facility here in the port covering an area of more than 800 acres. They deal with many different types of cargo, but mainly work with containerized cargo boxes, warehouses on the pier, or to me. Terminal can store more than 40,000 containers at any given time. Cranes that operate on the south end of the terminal are more of the Suez class cranes, once again, the largest class of container crane in the world. It takes about 90 seconds for one of these cranes to load or unload a containerized cargo box from a ship or barge. After the containers are taken off ship, they are either placed on the backs of tractor trailers or on the railroad cars. Port of Virginia has a direct rail link to Chicago, Illinois. That rail line is called the Heartland Corridor. Heartland Corridor carries double stack container trains, meaning each train car carries two vertically stacked container boxes. A fully loaded container train will handle about 1,500 containers. All types of cargoes are stored and shipped in these container boxes. Things like cars, wood, clothing, electronics, even food and refrigerated containers are all shipped this way.
our starboard side, you'll see the old Cardale Grain Pier and Grain Elevator here at Norfolk International Terminal. That part of the facility is no longer in use. You'll see NIT's pier number three to our starboard side. Pier three here at NIT, the last of the general cargo piers. On the south side of Pier 3, large black hull ship is a military cargo vessel designed to transport military cargo barges. That ship was designed and built with ballast tanks throughout the hull in order to, lift, to raise and lower the ship so that barges could be floated on and off the ship quickly and easily. However, that ship did not perform very well as she was designed and built and she has been taken out of service. On the north side of NIT's Pier 3 is a Ready Reserve Fleet Ship operated by the Federal Maritime Administration. That's also a 1960s era general cargo ship. And coming into view next on our starboard side is the highlight of our tour, Naval Station Norfolk, Virginia. Naval Station Norfolk is the world's largest naval operating base covering an area of more than 3,400 acres on a point of land known as Sewell's Point. Base is home to over 100 service ships and submarines, as well as a wide variety of aircraft which operate here as well. First ship that we'll see here at the base is on the south side of Pier Number One. That ship is warship Number 68. She is the USS Anzio. She is a Ticonderoga class guided missile cruiser. And we'll see a couple more Ticonderoga class ships on the south side of Pier Two. Ship Number 61 is the USS Monterey, and inshore firm is the USS Bella Gulf number 72. Ticonderoga class cruisers are the first class of only two to carry the sophisticated Aegis weapon system. The Aegis system consists of high-tech sonar, radar, communications, and computerized weaponry. Aegis equipped ships can track and prioritize well over 2,000 targets simultaneously. Those targets can be surface targets, submarine targets, air targets, even targets for other vessels as well. The computers associated with Aegis will determine whether the ship is tracking hostile or friendly targets. Hostile targets are automatically prioritized by the computers, and the computers will automatically select the best weapon to deal with any type of target. That all happens very quickly and very effectively in only fractions of seconds. Weaponry on board the Ticonderoga class ships includes two 5-inch deck guns, one on the bow of the ship, another on the stern. These ships also carry two I mean, these ships also carry two Phalanx close-in weapon systems used for close-in defense of the ship. These vessels also carry Mark 46 torpedoes used against enemy submarines, and they are equipped with 120 missiles on board each. Missile systems carried aboard the Ticonderoga-class ships include Navy Standard surface-to-air missile, Harpoon anti-ship missiles, and Tomahawk cruise missiles. Each of these ships is also equipped with two Seahawk helicopters, and these vessels are 567 feet in length, 55 feet wide, and each carries a crew of 375 on board. On the north side of pier number two, close to the channel, is ship number 46, which is the USS Tortuga. The Tortuga is a Whidbey Island class amphibious assault ship known as a landing ship dock, or LSD for short. This is the smallest class of amphibious assault ship. At 610 feet in length, 84 feet wide, that vessel will carry a crew of 340 and shall transport 400 marines. That ship will be equipped with four helicopters, which operate from the flat flight deck on the rear of the ship. Beneath the ship's flight deck is her well deck, where landing craft and hovercraft are stored and deployed. There are ballast tanks in the rear of that ship, which can be flooded with water, causing the stern to sink down to a level where landing craft can maneuver in and out of the ship quickly and easily once the stern gate of the ship has been opened. And coming into view just forward of the USS Tortuga on the north side of Pier Number 2 is the USS Way City. Way City is another of the Ticonderoga class guided missile cruisers. Pier 3 here at Naval Station Norfolk is the Navy's submarine pier. Subs stationed here in Norfolk are attack subs. You'll see three of them today. On the south side of the pier is a Los Angeles class fast attack submarine. On the north side of Pier 3, close to the channel, is a Virginia class sub. And in short of that is another Los Angeles class fast attack submarine. 
The primary mission of an attack sub, no matter which class, is to seek out and destroy enemy subs. That mission is carried out using the Mark 48 torpedo. Mark 48 is a heavyweight torpedo used only on submarines, and it is the sub's primary weapon with a strike range in excess of 20 nautical miles. Mark 48 torpedo will deliver 650 pounds of high explosives and that can travel at a rate of speed in excess of 70 miles per hour. These submarines are also equipped for long-range land attack carrying Tomahawk cruise missiles on board. The Tomahawk can be fired from either a surface or submerged position and that missile can be tipped to be very conventional or a small nuclear warhead. Depending on the version used, the Tomahawk cruise missile has a strike rate of between 700 to well over a thousand nautical miles. The submarines are nuclear powered. Each sub carries a single reactor. That reactor will provide ultra silent propulsion at speeds in excess of 25 knots when submerged. Reactors function for between 15 to 20 years, giving the submarine well over a million miles of steaming distance between refuelings. The submarines are 360 feet in length, 33 feet wide. You'll see about a third of the sub on the surface, and each sub carries a crew of 130 on board. On the north side of pier number four is ship number 55, that is the USS Leyte Gulf. She's another Ticonderoga class cruiser. In short, the Leyte Gulf is ship number 103, which is the USS Truxton. Truxton Excuse me, that is the USS Gravely, 103. The Gravely is an Arleigh Burke class destroyer. Ship number 58, in short of our starboard side, is the USS Philippine Sea. She's another of the Ticonderoga class cruisers. And close to the channel on the south side of pier number 5 is the USS Oscar Austin. Oscar Austin is a Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer. Arleigh Burke class ships are the second of only two classes of naval vessel to carry the Aegis weapon system. It is the same system carried on board the Ticonderoga class ships. Arleigh Burks are quite similar to the Ticonderoga class cruiser. However, Arleigh Burke class destroyers are newer and a bit smaller. These ships are 506 feet in length, 67 feet wide, carrying crews of 325 on board. The Arleigh Burke class ships are very capable multi-mission service ships carrying out anti-surface, anti-submarine, anti-air warfare, and long-range land attack. Arleigh Burke class ships are equipped with one 5-inch deck gun mounted aboard the ship's bow. The 5-inch gun is an effective range in excess of 17 nautical miles. That range can be extended to well over 70 nautical miles using particular ammunition. Arleigh Burke class ships are also equipped with two Phalanx close-in weapon systems. The Phalanx system is a radar-guided Gatling gun used for close-in defense of a ship against incoming missiles and aircraft within a three-mile radius. Arleigh Burks carry Mark 46 torpedoes used for anti-submarine warfare, and these vessels are equipped with 90 missiles on board. Missile systems carried aboard Aegis-equipped ships are stored and deployed from vertical launch system cells built into the ship's fore and aft decks. Missiles can fire directly out of the deck at a rate of one missile every second and a half if necessary. Arleigh Burks carry a Navy Standard surface-to-air missile. That missile used primarily against enemy aircraft, but it can be used against satellites and ballistic missiles if necessary. Arleigh Burks also carry Harpoon anti-ship missiles, which are low-flying sea-skimming missiles designed to fly beneath an enemy ship's radar. And Arleigh Burks carry Tomahawk cruise missiles as well. Ship number 64 on the north side of Pier 5 is the USS Gettysburg, another Ticonderoga-class ship. And on the south side of Pier 6 is ship number 95, USS James E. Williams. The Williams is a, another Arleigh Burke-class ship. You'll see the Ramage coming into view on the north side of Pier at number 6 now, number 61, also an Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer.
As we move to the north side of pier number six in the shore of the USS Ramage, it was number 60, that is the USS Normandy. The Normandy, another of the Ticonderoga class guided missile cruisers. Most of the Ticonderoga class ships are named for famous battles the United States has been involved in. On the south side of Pier 7, a couple more Arleigh Burke class destroyers, number 84, the USS Bulkley, and closer to the channel, at number 74, the USS McFall. We'll see quite a few Arleigh Burke class ships, ships this afternoon. The Navy plans on building more than 70 of these vessels. Price tag for a new one is running at about two and a half billion dollars. As we move to the north side of Pier 7, you'll see warship number 87 coming into view, that is the USS Mason. Navy's supply pier here in Norfolk and you'll see one of the supply ships of the Atlantic Fleet coming into view on the north side of Pier 8. You'll see the superstructure of that vessel currently. She is the U.S. naval ship Medgar Evers. Medgar Evers is a Lewis and Clark class replenishment ship known as an AOE which stands for ammunition, oils and explosives. She carries primarily dry goods including ammunition, explosives, food in both frozen and dry form, even the U.S. mail out to ships at sea. That ship will also carry about three and a half million gallons of fuels used to refuel ships out in the ocean. Medgar Evers is 600 feet in length, 100 feet wide, and she'll carry a crew of about 140 merchant marine sailors. That vessel is operated by the Military Sea Lift Command, or MSC. MSC ships are easily identified by gray, blue, and yellow band names on their smokestacks. And these vessels are owned by the Navy. They are under a naval command and crewed by civilian merchant marines. And these MSC ships include ammunition carriers, cargo ships, oilers, hospital ships. Most of the non-combatant vessels of the Navy fleet now operated by the Military Sea Lift Command. Ship number 50 to our starboard side is the USS Oak Hill. The Oak Hill is another of the Whidbey Island class amphibious assault ships. And across the pier from the USS Oak Hill is LHD number 5, that is the USS Baton. If you look ahead of us to the south side of Pier 11, you'll see LHD number 1, that is the USS Wasp. Both of these ships are Wasp class amphibious assault ships, known as Landing Helicopter Docks, or LHDs for short. These vessels are 844 feet in length, 140 feet wide at the flight deck. They carry crews of 1,292 and each can transport more than 1,800 Marines. These vessels are equipped with 40 helicopters, both attack and transport helicopters. They are also equipped with a variety of landing craft and hovercraft. And each of these ships carries some of the Marines Harrier jump jets, which are fixed-wing jet-powered aircraft capable of vertical takeoff and landing. Harriers provide tactical air support during an amphibious assault. These ships are also equipped with some of the Marines Osprey aircraft, which are propeller-driven aircraft with rotating wings, allowing that aircraft to operate like a helicopter or an airplane. In addition to all of that, each of these WASP-class ships carries a 600-bed hospital on board. Those hospitals are complete with intensive care units and operating rooms as well. Makes these ships very valuable to have near shore during an amphibious assault. It also makes these ships very good for humanitarian efforts. The United States has sent ships like these around the world in recent years, provided humanitarian assistance in places like Haiti and Japan after earthquakes, islands in the South Pacific after the tsunami, and even U.S. cities like New York and New Orleans after hurricanes. On the south side of pier number 10 is the USS Mesa Verde. Mesa Verde is a San Antonio class assault ship. 
you 688 feet in length, 108 feet wide. She'll carry a crew of 400 and transport 800 Marines. She'll carry six helicopters, as well as landing craft and hovercraft. And you may notice some interesting design features of that vessel. First of all, the two enclosed mast systems housing very sophisticated communications and radar equipment, keeping that equipment out of sea conditions and weather. You'll also notice the angled sides throughout the superstructure of that ship. Those angled sides along with some composite materials used to build the superstructure give that ship a stealth quality, making it more difficult to pick up and track on radar at long distance. On the north side of Pier 10, Whitehall ship you see in short is a naval vessel. That is the U.S. naval ship Pathfinder. Pathfinder is used to, to take very accurate and detailed surveys of the ocean's bottom. Those surveys are then used to produce very accurate charts, which are used by submarines. The Pathfinder is operated by the Military Sealift Command, once again indicated by the gray, blue, and yellow bandings on the smokestack of the vessel. Inshore between Piers 10 and 11 is the Navy's small boat basin. That's where the Navy stores work barges and tugboats. The Navy no longer doing any of its own towing work. All the towing done at naval bases is now done by private companies. Here in the Hampton Roads area, the Moran Towing Company does most of the ship docking and undocking work for the Navy. LHD number one to our starboard side, once again the USS Wasp, the first of her class. And the next three piers that will pass today are piers 11, 12, and 14. There is no pier 13 here at Naval Station Norfolk. And these are the Navy's aircraft carrier piers. We'll see a couple of the Navy's super aircraft carriers this afternoon. The first coming into view on north, the north side of Pier 11 is ship number 78. This is the USS Gerald R. Ford. She is the first and so far only ship of the Gerald Ford class of super aircraft carrier. The Navy classifies any aircraft carrier of over 1,000 feet in length a super carrier. USS Ford is 1,092 feet in length. She is 200 58 feet wide, that vessel weighing in at just under 100,000 gross tons. An example of the weight of that ship, she is equipped with four propellers. Each of those propellers is 22 feet in diameter, and each propeller weighing in at about 60,000 pounds. USS Ford will carry 75 aircraft when underway. She can carry up to 120 if necessary, but the Navy puts aircraft carriers to sea with 75 aircraft on board under normal circumstances. And those aircraft are taking off, landing, and being raised and lowered to and from the flight deck at all times during the day or night, rain or shine. That much activity on the flight deck of any aircraft carrier makes being a crew member on the flight crew one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. And the aircraft of that ship are taking off or being launched. They are launched off the forward flight deck of the ship and assisting aircraft then launch. USS Ford is equipped with four electromagnetic catapults. She is the first ship to carry electromagnetic catapults. The catapult will launch an aircraft from a dead stop to a speed in excess of 150 knots in a matter of only a few seconds and a very short distance. When the aircraft land on the aircraft carrier's flight deck, they land on the rear flight deck of the ship, coming across the ship's stern first, stretched across the rear flight deck of the aircraft carrier, are four steel arresting cables. Those arresting cables are designed to help stop a aircraft very quickly, and each of the airplanes in the aircraft carrier's air wing is equipped with a tail hook. The tail hook will snag one of the four arresting cables, which will help bring the ship, or excuse me, the aircraft to a very quick stop. Now, if the aircraft were to miss one of the arresting cables, it's actually not a big deal at all. The aircraft land at full power. That's done in case the arresting cable is missed. That way, the aircraft can simply take back off, circle around, and come in for another landing. To move aircraft on the ship, she is equipped with four flight elevators. Those elevators can move an aircraft between the deck levels of the ship in about seven seconds. Hangar deck of the ship is located just beneath the flight deck, and with a full complement of crew on board, USS Ford is home to more than 4,500 men and women. That is a much smaller crew than the older style aircraft carriers. And that is because one of the 
That is because the Ford is one of the most highly automated ships ever delivered to the U.S. Navy. She carries the most up-to-date computer, navigation, and air traffic control systems on board as well. And the USS Ford is nuclear-powered. She'll carry two large reactors. We won't see any ships on Pier 12 and one ship on the south side of Pier 14, which is the USS George H.W. Bush. The Bush is warship number 77, and she is the last of the Nimitz-class supercarriers. USS Bush is 1,092 feet in length. She is 252 feet wide. That vessel also weighing in at just under 100,000 tons. The USS George Bush will carry 75 aircraft as well. That ship also can carry 120 aircraft if necessary. And the USS Bush carries steam-powered catapults, assisting aircraft to take off. She carries four flight elevators on board as well. The hangar deck of that ship also located just beneath the flight deck. That is where aircraft are stored and repaired. And with a full complement of crew on board, the USS Bush is home to more than 6,000 men and women. She is not nearly as highly automated as the USS Ford. You can think of each of these aircraft carriers as a floating city. They have all types of things that cities have. Besides the obvious airport, you can carry movie theaters, barber shops, laundromats, doctors and dentist offices, religious chapels, even a fast food restaurant, which is open around the clock when the ship is underway. And that is in addition to all the galleys and mess halls carried aboard the aircraft carriers. USS Bush is also nuclear powered. She also carries two large reactors. The reactors on these aircraft carriers provide all the electricity needed aboard these ships. They also provide well over 200,000 shaft horsepower. That much horsepower allows an aircraft carrier to reach speeds in excess of 50 miles per hour. You can just imagine a ship the size of the Empire State Building traveling along at highway speeds. And the USS Bush is the last ship we'll see here at the base today. Looking out across the breakwater to our starboard bow, you'll see out into the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. It's about 17 miles across the bay from this point on to open sea. Off in the distance, you'll see the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, part of Interstate 64, connecting the city of Norfolk on the south with Hampton, Virginia, to the north. At the north opening of Hampton Roads is Point Comfort, named in 1607 by Captain Christopher Newport and the Jamestown Hundreds. Until a few years ago, when the Army finally shut the base down, it was last used as a classroom training venue for Army officers and most of Fort Monroe is now open to the public. Large brick building on Point Comfort to our starboard side is called the Chamberlain Hotel. On Hampton are Hampton University and the Virginia Air and Space Museum. Located just to the north of downtown Hampton by a few miles is Langley Air Force Base and next door to that NASA Langley Research Center. And across the harbor to our starboard bow, in the distance you'll see that industrial point of land, which is Newport News Point. Newport News Point, part of the city of Newport News, Virginia, and around to the west side of the point is the Huntington Ingalls Shipyard, formerly known as Newport News Shipbuilding. That yard is where all the Navy's super aircraft carriers are built under construction currently are the next two Ford-class ships, which will be the USS John F. Kennedy and the USS Enterprise. Both of those names have been used for previous aircraft carriers of the U.S. Navy. We're downtown during the remainder of the cruise. If you have a question about anything, feel free to ask the crew. If you care for something, our ship store and bar will, open, will remain open. And we'll return to our dock at 1. We certainly hope everyone's enjoying the cruise. Thank you so much for coming out with us on board Victory Rover.